Hello, hello, this is Bunny Hoppy in part two of my recap of the winning run of Brogue. And uh, to recap, in case some people choose to skip to this part, um, my current weapon is a plus ten, a plus ten sword of Quietus. And due to my incompetence, incompetence, I mean, I actually forgot to unequip my armor when I'm running into acid stuff. It actually gets a lot worse than this, and I actually get rid of it at some point. So this is my current crappy armor, and it's not providing me no armor score at all, which is kind of a disappointment and let's see my main my main sort of weapons are my staff of blinking these um, this wand of negation it's actually for emergencies in case my other negation options aren't as useful because negation in this game is super useful the recharging charm this comes in useful at later floors I figured I'd use this one sparringly because it's not... It, it, it takes a really long time to charge, about 5,000 turns. That's more than like half, but that's more than like quarter of a whole run, so that's crazy. The fire immunity charm that comes in useful, and uh, yeah, that's my basic, that's my basic build for now. I think about it, I think I'm wearing a cursed piece of armor, and I could have gotten rid of that if I wore my default piece of armor. Alright, let's get straight into the actual run again. L key to move forward. Here, I started encountering um, a very new enemy type that I haven't seen before. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Yep, this is pretty good. Here, I started encountering um, an enemy called the Phantom, and I've only seen this enemy, actually seen this enemy once. Um, these enemies remain invisible at all times, and you could tell they're in an the area because you'd see the area glow purple a little bit, and it's up to you to decide where they are, judging by the, the blood spills on the ground, and the lighting from the ectoplasm. So I may I try to make some guesses on where they are. Here I was farming the door, trying to see where these guys are gonna come from, but I didn't I I, I, I don't think I actually found that one. I kind of ignored them. Maybe I didn't think I was being attacked by anything. Or maybe I killed it. I think I did. Let me take a look. If it shows I killed something... Yeah, you hit something, something suddenly die. Yeah, I actually killed that phantom, but... Yeah, I just told you a strat on how to actually deal with phantoms in case you encounter them. Because those guys are kind of a pain in the butt. I can't, I can't imagine fighting these guys in... How it's like in normal difficulty. I think I ignored... Yeah, that was a scroll of summon monsters. I actually ignored it. Whoops. That was my first encounter with a golem, and currently it's reduced to, like, say, a pile of bones and rubble. Um... Golems could actually be instantly killed if you use negation on them, negating their magical properties, and considering that golems are 100% magical matter, you could just kill them instantly if you get rid of their magic, so pretty cool. I think I yanked- I think I yanked this zombie out of his, um, gas and tried to kill it, but that didn't work- that didn't work too well. Here I started encountering... Encountering pixies. Guys are such a pain in the butt. Here I figured um, the pixie would lose a turn since he was nauseous, but I accidentally blinked all the way over here.
and uh, since I wasn't in any proximity to the pixie, I figured it was uh, that thing wouldn't be a problem until it um, flies to me. So uh, I decided to explore around, ignoring the fact that there was a pixie in the area. Counted some imps. Let's try to s skip some parts. Hoo-hoo, man. Instantly killed that ogre. <laughs> ogre shaman. Alright, the pixie is back. And from here I figured that pixies were weak against opening doors, so... I think I remember to do that later on. I forgot. Because sometimes pixies don't bother flying towards you and kind of stay stay in their location if it's advantageous to them. Like if they're over lava or um, water, they wouldn't chase you. They're smarter than that. I really love all the work that went into this game's artificial intelligence. He did a... the developer, I fr which I can't recall the name to right now, did an absolutely amazing job. Oh, his name is... oh, I remember his name now. Brian Walker. Because I was thinking about the title of this game, it's called Brogue. Which is called... which is, which could be called Brian's Rogue. Since it's sort of um, heavily inspired by the original Rogue. And he decided to put his name somewhat in the title, so it's called Brogue. Or Brian's Rogue. Anyway, this is floor 16. Here I decided to drop my shitty armor and equip my regular leather armor and get rid of the the wand of beckoning because it was all out of charges and I wasn't going to use any of my enchantments on it to get additional charges so it was taking up inventory space. Okay, moving along. Hmm. Still trying not to not to move too fast because I don't want to miss any um, important moments. Because there are lots, there are a lot of noteworthy moments in this run that I want to comment on, even though it's making my throat absolutely tired. I was talking for an hour before. Oh, this is the point where my armor started getting weakened. Yep, it's weak, definitely weakened. And I was hiding from the turret that was doing that to me. Here, I think, yeah. I figured something that takes a while for turrets to actually start shooting at you, I kind of used that to my advantage. While hiding behind the walls. And the salamander again. Not a big deal though. I keep say I keep like imagining salamanders as a huge deal. I guess they are a big deal on normal mode runs, but this is easy. Don't worry guys, the game does get super hard at some point. Okay. Moving along here, and uh, I sh encounter a bunch of rates. Let's see if the preview, I mean the zoom in, actually works for this part. It's better? Maybe the middle, maybe the middle view is better. No, there's no fixing this. I should have increased the the window for that. And it's not worth looking going up close to that moment because nothing nothing serious happened there. Alright, this is where No. This is a previous floor. Why did I come back up? Oh, because I was actually going up and not down, so I wanted to keep going down. Alright, depth 18. 
this is where stuff gets a little, little bit interesting. And you'll see why. In a second. Or in a few. Oh, this is the floor with the ring room. I figured since I... The ring... There was a ring in my inventory that wasn't identified. I figured I'd get rid of that ring and exchange it with this one. But... I don't think I managed to identify it because I was kind of using the whole turn formula by waiting it out. Exploiting the dark priestesses by using the doors again. I don't know if Quietus actually gets a sort of a bonus. A bonus chance to kill things instantly if you were to surprise it by a door. <laughs> this is an interesting thing that happened over here. Let's see if we can actually get a close up with that one. It might be doable. Yep. Here, I actually trigger a flood trap, but I didn't lose any items. I don't know why I got close up to that one. Flood traps are not that interesting, but I think they're an interesting dynamic for this game. There's not a lot of, of turn-based roguelikes where a room floods and you lose your stuff. I think that might be a thing in NetHack, but I haven't... I haven't played NetHack myself. I just heard things about it, and I read an entire... Entire page that describes the thousands of ways you could die in that hack, and I'm always using that as inspiration because it's amazing. Okay, where am I now? <laughs> this part had a steam trap, but I managed to get out of it. Wow, and um, I found the stairs for the for the next floor, but what happens next is kind of kind of interesting. Let's see if we get a close up. After I get rid of these ogre guys. Um in this area down here there's a zombie. And I could have ignored this whole encounter altogether, but this is what I did did something really interesting here. Since I knew there was a zombie here, even though I haven't filled out the map yet, I decided to throw my potion of incineration. And since I was far away from the zombies that it wouldn't become a threat to me, um, that zombie's gas actually created a whole... a whole flaming... flaming heap of destruction and, dis and just wrecked a whole bunch of dar... See, look at this, the zombie. Let me take a closer look at that guy. Um, let's see, in the middle, yep. The zombie, the, since the zombie uh, releases a bunch of gas and it's flammable, when the zombie moves around, the fire will actually move along with it, destroying anything in its path. Oh man. Oh, those Dar Blade Masters, they got wrecked. And the zombie himself? Oh. Oh, completely missed that part. Yep, I actually stepped towards the right a little bit and fell through the floor, and now I'm on depth 19. So we didn't get to see how the zombie died. That's unfortunate. So let's proceed. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I watched this replay three times and I forgot I actually immediately fall to depth 20 because I fell into a hole trap again. I have a feeling that was set up that way because that was super clever. Anyway, I managed to skip two floors completely and at this point I was like... Would it be better if I went back? If I went back to see if I missed anything, or just proceed forward, considering I was already close to the end. I decided to go with the ladder. I decided to push forward. I said to myself... 
it can't it can't get any worse. I mean, it will get worse, but if it does, I'll face it with the tools I have and try to think. So at this point, I was playing really meticulously, trying to trying to observe the details in the environment. Here, I encounter more of those um, phantoms. And I was actually trying to guess their location based on the ectoplasms. And I was actually attacking them just fine. I think this is where I actually figured out the ectoplasm guys. And uh, on top of here, I try to I try to make a guess that there was a phantom in this area, so I try to I try to see if I could attack this, but I didn't. I couldn't interact with this little this dot in a corner. Maybe, maybe, maybe that was the ectoplasm from the phantom I've already killed, but I don't know. Maybe I encounter more on this floor. Still looking around and confusion trap again. If I learned anything from confusion traps, I learned that it's better just stay put and try to think of last minute situations if enemies are wandering. So. I waited out in that trap, so... Uh, I stepped on a flood trap again. Items getting washed away, but it wasn't a big deal because... There wasn't any enemies around. Now I think about it... Were there a lot of enemies on this floor? Because I do remember on one of these floors... I used my telepathy to see if there was any enemies in the area, and... Uh, the message was there are none. I actually use the wall shattering scroll over here because I needed inventory space and I figured I'd use it in a place that might be advantageous in case I wanted to escape. <sighs> okay, step 21, we're close to the end. Still chugging down those potions of strength. Strength is currently at 17, which is pretty high. Why am I strength to at least be 18 so I could at least wear a high tier armor? But I, at this point, I wasn't sure if I was gonna find any new armor because let's see. Yeah, I had a a minus six leather armor. Then that's all due to acid, and I wasn't getting any armor. So if I were to be encountering these heavy hitting enemies. I would have no armor class to avoid them. At this point, I got rid of that scroll of aggravate monsters because it was just taking up space in my inventory. This floor layout was kind of confusing at me for, for me at first. Here, let's see if we can get a closer look up there. That's not a good point. Not good either. What about this one? Yeah. Here, I use the Blinking Scroll to get close to this Dar Battle Mage. These guys are a pain in the butt. And I... I think I killed him instantly. Nope, just a couple of hits. Here, I farmed the door. And got rid of the Dar... Dar Priestess. Okay, trying to trying to abide by the food clock, and I think I'm all out of food at this point. I'm not so sure if that was my last meal for this entire run. It might it might as well be because I fell down that pit again. Even though I was trying really really hard to be careful, this game has pushed me to my limit. I think this is about the sixth time I've fallen through a floor. If I had time to do editing and such, I would have added a, a fall counter, but I don't know. Woohoo! <laughs> this was a scary part. This part over here. Let's try to get closer up. I, I want to get into my, to my psyche at this moment over here. Let's see, bottom left. 
Here I encounter a tentacle horror. These guys are terribly, terribly difficult. From here, I decided to hide. And I was thinking about my options. It's like... I was like, should I face that guy, or should I find a way around him? I was looking through my armor pieces, I was trying to figure out what to do, and uh, from here I decided to unequip my armor, unequip my armor because I wasn't getting any armor class out of it, so I abandoned my love, my plus six, I mean my minus six leather armor. I figured since I had no armor anyway, I might as well get rid of get rid of that for space and cross my fingers and hope I at least find one armor piece towards the end. So let's proceed around that tentacle horror. I actually I actually um studied the brimstone a little bit, try to get a pattern, but I still got I still uh, yeah I still got burnt here. So. Yeah, right around that corner I found the stairs. I was so relieved because I didn't have to face that tentacle horror at all. So, let's get back to regular view. And proceed. Okay, this is where, this is where stuff gets really intense. I encounter a... A tentacle horror over wait let's get a better look yep a tentacle horror down here and uh, I had no idea where to proceed and uh, to my to my terrible luck the tentacle horror re um, notices me I was actually looking through my inventory to see if I had any any options so I figured I tried going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy even though that was probably the riskiest thing I've done because I just wanted to see how strong one of these guys were. So this is what I did. I equipped my I, I equipped my I equipped my um spear. I equipped the spear of slowness by the way, just to see if I could get at least one one slowness debuff on him. But he was taking so much health away from me, and I couldn't get that runic to activate. I figured at this point it didn't matter. I equipped my, I equipped my sword of um, quietness, and actually got it on my first roll. Then that was really good. But as you can see, that tentacle horror was gonna kill me in at least five or four hits, and I didn't. And at this point. I told myself. I really told myself if I were if, if 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 I were to get captured by a tentacle horror, that would have been certain death, and I didn't want that to happen at all. So at this point, I was like, avoid tentacle horrors at all costs. So yeah, it gets really intense here. Here. I decided to use my telepathy to see what was in the area and in this corner. Let's try to get a closer a closer view of that. In the corner, another tentacle horror. This has been and I was kinda hoping that there were no stairs in that area. So I was actually proceeding through this floor carefully. I figured that um, these guys on top of here, these were phantoms, and as, I figured as long as I knew, as long as I knew how to track the ectoplasm, and especially considering the fact that there was a door over here, I could use that to my advantage. Sorry for stopping to go over my tactics, but this is this was my state of mind at this moment. I actually stopped to think about which way to go because I untapped 23. I didn't want to start this all over again. So I made some really subtle movements. I wanted to try to get a sneak attack on that imp. It didn't 
bother encountering me, and I thought that would have been more pathway to go to walk over here, but it turned out to be a dead end. So I used my wand of blinking to move across the area. That would have been risky because. Um, the further away you try to blink, the higher chance of you falling into lava and such. I went into this room hoping to fight some Blade Masters, but they were already captive. I should have paid attention to the messages at the side here that told me these guys were captive. I told myself I wasn't going to look for the key, and I didn't care for allies at this point. So... There, there it was, there was a key right in the next room, so... I accepted the gift. And instead of running, instead of running over here, this is what I did. Let's try to get a closer up of that scene over here. Yep, instead of running away, I paid close attention to the coloration of this room. It was getting purple, and that was a sign that there were phantoms spawning in the area, so I stood by this door and waited for the door to open. And, Allah, the door opened by itself without any enemy... enemy... to be seen. But since I knew the door opened, I just proceeded to attack them, and... one by one. The door kept opening on its own, and... I kept opening the door, checking to see if there were any more, so no more was following me, so... From here, I decided to take the Dar Battle Mage. I was actually thinking about my options here carefully, because what was the worst that could happen with a Dar Battle Mage? Battle Mage could set grass on fire, but I had some fire immunity options in case that would have been a threat to me, so I took the Dar Battle Mage with me. Okay, walking through that phantom room very carefully because I wasn't sure if anyone was anyone of them was still alive. But there was a phantom hiding up in this corner. I didn't actually know it wasn't up in this corner until I wanted to walk up in that corner and I got rid of that phantom. I was moving across this area really carefully, hitting the search function in case there was any traps or holes again. And I was very mindful that there was still a tentacle horror down in that corner. And this is what happened. This part is probably one of my favorite parts. At least for the intense epicness of it. I hate to use that word, but it was a pretty great a pretty good fight. My Dark Battle Mage just auto-fired on that tentacle horror from all the way down here. And this happened. The Dark Battle Mage kept firing at that Tentacle Horror. I was really happy because that Tentacle Horror was going down really good and... It was slowed, it was burned, it was getting hit by spells. That guy had no bloody chance. And he... The Dark Battle Mage killed the one true threat on his floor and I was really happy... I'm really proud of this guy. The Dark Battle Mage continued to attack a bunch of fury furies that was scouring the area, and I didn't have to fight any of these guys. Um, since I knew there was only a tentacle horror down here, I kind of moved down to explore in case it was guarding anything, any items. It turns out it wasn't. And this is where I made a fatal mistake on this run. I went inside of this area, and uh, this is what happened. I got ambushed by some phantoms, and uh, just to get a closer look up, a closer look up of this area, if I can. If not, it's no huge deal. Yeah, no huge deal. Yeah, but I actually got ambushed by some phantoms, and my dark battle mage got wrecked. From here, I used the door to kill the phantoms that were coming through. There were at least about three or two of them over there. Alright, I think at this point I moved to the stairs. Because 
I've already seen everything that was needed to be seen on this floor. Oh man, and this is where um this is where an imp stole my spear, but in my mind I was thinking that spear hasn't been of any use to me. That that imp could keep that crap. So instead of chasing it, I just went straight for the stairs. I didn't care. All right. We're at the near end of this run. Near end. Here I was hitting the search function, looking for anything that might be a threat to this whole run. And this is where I found the thing that saved this run. Um, a plate armor. At this point, I didn't know whether this plate armor was cursed, so I didn't equip it right away. I was still at zero armor at this point. I forgot what was the prompt. Oh, yes, I actually used my... Yes, I actually used that scroll of Remove Curse to check to see if that armor was cursed. And since it wasn't cursed, I equipped it right away. I was at least one one stat away from the armor bonuses it offered, but I figured it would have been enough. Um, I found another ring, but at this point I didn't care about identify <laughs> identifying rings. Um, and as you can see, I fell through yet another hole in the floor. Oh boy, this is where I encountered a dragon. Let's see if I can get close up to that, because... I, I skipped a few turns what I did just now, but... Let's see. Yep, I encounter a dragon over here. And... I used one of my negation items to negate its um, extra magical effects, and I straight up tried to attack it. I kept missing. But my sword of Quietus managed to do its work. The Star Blade Magister didn't last long, by the way, but it was a good distraction. Wow, this part. I remember what happened here. I got absolutely surrounded by these guys, and I didn't know what to do, so I wanted to rest in a corner, but. Yep. I got burned and surrounded by a bunch of enemies and even more enemies pouring in. So at this point I used, since it was a futile effort, I used my scroll of teleportation and warped all the way to the corner here because I didn't want to, I didn't want to deal with being surrounded and that would have been a really bad way to die, especially since I have extra scrolls of teleportation anyway, so... Unfortunately, it warts me straight to the upward staircase, so at least... So, from here I at least had an idea of where I was. From here I was looking for secret doors. And I was really concerned about finding the exit. I encounter a Lich at this point. Good thing that Lich didn't set me on fire because that door has been very helpful to me. Here I encounter another bad boy. Let's get a closer look up at that bad boy. Yeah, another one of these guys. A dragon. Um, what did I do here? I saw that there was a, a paralyzed trap over here, and I thought, I thought, I, I was thinking in my mind, could dragons be paralyzed? So I threw the paralyzed trap, and I don't think that did any good. I was probably paralyzed myself. Yeah, that's why it didn't work. Looking at it from retrospective, it, it makes more sense. 
But I managed to get the quietest kill in one roll. That was really good. Because that dragon would have taken a whole ton of damage for me. Here I encounter another Lich, which burnt down the door, which I needed to kite these guys. The Lich was still setting me on fire. I was really being careful not to back up too much at this point because I didn't want to get rid of my door because I needed that door there. So from here I try to get rid of as many as I can while I wasn't being burned by a Lich. Okay, here I get rid of the Lich, and I was chased by a Dar Priestess. And from here, when I backed up, I noticed the door was still opened, and that gave me a clue that I was being attacked by phantoms. Door kept opening, and... I was waiting to see if that Dar Priestess would have came in, but since she wasn't following me, um, I figured she had friends with her, and I was right, she had a friend with her. And there was no kiting this, so... I blinked, and tried to get close up to these guys, and get rid of her friends. That worked out really well. Alright, let's get off the scene for a second. Nothing interesting after that encounter. Here I find another Potion of Descent. I figured that they would be useful on the way up. And I figured it would be especially useful on the next floor because... The next floor was the final floor and I didn't want to go any deeper. Okay, from here I was waiting for imps to come to me and attacking them. But this imp got away with one of my Cosmic Gas Potions and got away, but I didn't care to chase it. I just wanted to, to find a way out of this place. Okay. I wanted to avoid as much encounters as I can with those dark priestesses and whatevs. I blinked towards that dark priestess before it ran because I figured she had other friends with her. My dark battle mage is still wrecking stuff. This room. Let's see if we can get a closer close up here. Even though nothing is interesting, nothing too interesting has been happening over here. Just a battle with some liches, some furies. I think this one got super close. Yeah, this one got close. I remember. I ran out of options, and I used a scroll of negation to remove the magical effects in this area because in my mind I was thinking this whole area is filled with magical creatures so I might as well disable their magic stuff. I try to blink to get close to one of these enemies and I got cornered. From here I decided to attack the fury since I figured the phantoms since I figured the phantoms don't do a lot of damage. So, I started attacking the Lich at this moment. Alright, after I got rid of the Lich, it was up to- it was up to, it was time to get rid of the phantoms and the furies. Hmm, I forgot what I did just now. I think I used a negation scroll to get rid of that explosive bloat explosive properties because I didn't want it exploding in my face while I had low health but unfortunately this is this is what made this run scary a tentacle horror was in the room and I didn't want it to see me and it saw me this was scary I threw a what potion did I throw yeah I threw a paralysis potion inside of there but it wasn't as helpful as I wanted it to be. I encountered a poisonous bloat. Now that I think about it, I could have attacked this guy and 
actually got a lot of damage off of the tentacle horror, but I didn't think about that. My my only reaction was to keep running. So I kept running. Found a secret door. If I didn't find that, I would have been pinned between here and I would have been surely dead. I'm trying to see if I get a good... Yeah, this might be a good view. I kept running. Trying to find any traps, but I was pinned between this tentacle horror and a bloat. I didn't know what to do here. This would have been this would have been the end of the run right here, and this is what I did. Um, I figured since I had a potion of I mean not a potion, a charm of fire immunity, I attacked the bloat in order to tank the gas a little bit. I ran towards. Before I died, I used a... Yeah, no, I didn't die. I didn't... I wasn't almost dead at this point, but... I used the fire charm... The fire immunity charm over here and just swam in the lava. Away from this tentacle horror. And the tentacle horror had nothing to do. He was helpless at this point. I was swimming away. I didn't have enough fire... I didn't have a lot of fire immunity considering that charms... Considering that charms don't have a lot of fire immunity to, to begin with, and I escaped that encounter, but the tentacle horror was still alive. So from here, I actually zapped it with my... I zapped it with my wand. I zapped it with my wand of poison. Not the wand of poison, the staff of poison. And zapped it again to make it fatally poisoned and destroyed that tentacle horror. This was the most terrifying encounter in a whole run. My hands was literally shaking at this point. And after getting out of this situation, I was so, so happy. I was so proud of myself. I felt like I did something amazing. Oh boy, this, this this was this is why I play roguelikes. This is why I play video games. Just for encounters like that. That was amazing. Oh boy. Anyways, let's let's move on. That the, the most intense part of the run is over, but Yeah. I was finishing exploring the area. I was still being careful because I wasn't sure if there was any more tentacle horrors in the area. I looked at this area down here and I said, nope, I'm not exploring here. And I decided to dive down into the pit to the next floor because I didn't want to bother running back to the stairs and spawning another tentacle horror, for example. And, uh... Unfortunately for me, I landed right next to a tentacle horror. This was the final. This is the final floor, the the home stretch. This is where Brogue comes to an end. Well, the run is still there's still plenty more to the run, but this is what I did. I looked through my inventory looking for options. I saw that I had a a charm of telepathy ready to use, so I decided to use use that first. As soon as I was out of the Tentacle Horror's path, um, I used uh, tele I used the Telepathy Charm to see if there's any enemies in this area, and I was so scared because I didn't- I- n nothing here t um, gave me an idea where the amulet was. I was so scared. Um, from here, I kind of stepped back a little bit. I used uh, my final scroll of mapping to get a look at the area because at this point I still had no idea where the amulet would have been. At this point, I was thinking maybe it's by the stairs because there are two there are two flames in this corner over here, and. Uh, I thought to myself, what if it's up there? What if it's near the upward staircase? Would that be super lucky? 
so from here I clear out all the enemies that were bothering me and being very careful not to um, wake up this tentacle horror up in a corner because that would have been the end of the run. I was being mindful of my movements, trying to stay out of this guy's sight. Okay. And uh, let's see if I can get a good view. Yep, this is a good view. This area is completely empty, according to my recent telepathy. I was hitting the search function in case there were any traps, and to my surprise... Whoops. To my surprise, the prize was right in my in my sight. The 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 amulet of the amulet of Yendor was right over here, near the stairs. Just where it wasn't like where the torches were, like I thought they were originally, but it was definitely close. Super lucky that I was at this point. I was like grab the thing and run for my life because that was the thing on my mind. I immediately grabbed it. The music changed specifically for this mod. And from here I encounter the final the final enemy, the warden of Yendor. Warden as Yendor is indicated by that um, capital Y. And I was like, could this guy really kill me? But I also noticed there was a potion of levitation in the corner and I said, that would be super useful. So I decided to grab it without noticing there was a freaking dragon around the corner. I, sh I, I should have sworn I used my precognition or psychic powers to at least tell me that all the dragons were asleep, but I didn't anticipate this. So this is where the run gets intense, guys. Alright, I decide to blink away from the dragon and just run. The dragon caught up with me, and I wanted to get, uh... I wanted to, to activate my instant kill on this, on my weapon. Since I figured this was the last dragon I was ever going to encounter, it was worth trying to fight him, and I managed to get the the quietest kill on him. And here I was attacking the the warden of Yendor to see if I could get the the quietest effect on him, but I was like, nah, I'm wasting my nutrition on this, so I decided to keep running. The guy was pretty slow anyway, so. Liches. I can't describe how intense this whole moment is. Whoops, wrong screen. I meant to do this one. Yeah, there were phantoms. I didn't want those guys chasing me to the next floor. Alright, the Yendor guy is on my tail. From here, I decided to stay put. I saw how much damage this guy did. And, oh boy. This is where stuff... It, it, it didn't get super intense here because I had options. There was a wandering tentacle horror. Oh boy, to my delight. I threw a potion of descent and sent that guy falling to the next floor. And I just stayed put since I was confused. And since I told myself I had a potion of life, I figured it was worth waiting out the confusion while taking damage. Now, after getting rid of the confusion, I kept moving on. 
And uh, I think that I think that goblin got away with something. Let's see what it got away with. I mean, that imp stole one of my unidentified rings, and I was like, I'm not gonna bother. All I cared about at this point was getting to the end of this hellish, hellish dungeon. At this point, I was running while being careful. I just wanted to put as much distance as I can between me and that um, Servant of Yendor. I forgot his name, by the way. Okay, depth 23. Still pretty far from the end of this run. From here, I was like, I didn't want any phantoms to follow me. Oh boy. This is a crazy little battle here. I use one of my... I use a potion of caustic gas, but that dark battle mage managed to set the gas on fire. This guy gave me serious problems. I didn't want him following me to the next floor at all. I managed to get rid of him, and he dropped... He actually dropped a really good item. And I was like, should I keep... Can I keep running? Nah, this guy is pretty slow, so I decided to grab that. Even though I didn't use it at all. Okay. I was resting by the stairs, hoping that that guy would have taken long to reach me, because I needed at least a little bit of health to survive this part in case I got burned. Knowing, remembering that there was a tentacle horror over here, I didn't, I avoided that area at all costs. And, uh, let's see, moving to the stairs. And, uh, upon coming up the stairs, I encounter... I encounter a pixie surrounded by some wraiths. Kind of an intense battle, but nothing... Nothing serious. The pixie managed to get close to me. If that pixie wasn't a flying enemy, it would have triggered this alarm trap. Though I highly doubt it would have been a huge problem, because I feel like most of the enemies on this floor are kind of cleared out. Okay. <laughs> that Yendor guy actually stepped on the alarm trap. And it turns out something else is following that guy, so I kept moving. Mm -mm. Alright. Floor 20. I use a potion of levitation to get over these pits really quickly. I think at this point actually no, the the younger guy did catch up with me. I remember. But this is where stuff gets a little bit tricky. And you'll see why in a second. See this guy on top of here? This guy? Let's see if I can get a close up to this guy, because this guy is a big troll. Not a troll, but just a a pain in my butt. Nah, I can't I can't get a good view of him. Yeah, there he is. This guy just kept farming this whole this whole Okay, let me start at the beginning. There's a pixie floating over some water, and he is casting spells at me, and there's nothing I could do about it. He kept shooting at me, and I was like, mm, I'm bailing out of here. So I bailed down here, thinking I was going to be safe. But, it wasn't a safe location. Still looking, alright. Let's go in regular view. The and I realized the younger guy caught up with me. And I was like, I'm gonna fly over there. So I put on a potion of levitation, try to float across, but the pixie disabled my ability to fly right over the right over the water 
so I had no choice but to retreat. I was so scared at this point because I didn't want to deal with that pixie following me. And I managed to get rid of it. <sighs> okay. Another pixie. But unfortunately, I didn't care that much. I had enough vantage points. And oh boy, I found some food. That would have been... I knew that would have been helpful. At this point, I was stuck in webs while getting knocked around by this Yender guy. I was like, how to get to those stairs? I got rid of my Potion of Darkness since I got no use for it and I picked up the food. Found a secret entrance to the stairs going up. And uh, from here, I decided to keep healing. Actually, no. What did I do here? Oh yes, I used my Charm of Fire Immunity to walk through this Brimstone without getting any damage. I used my Staff of Blinking to get a little extra distance. Encountered a troll that was conveniently hidden inside of a statue. Notice that I'm not familiar with any of these floors because I accidentally fell down some holes. Alright, I can counter a couple of allies I didn't free at this point. Okay. At this point, I was in the medium difficulty territory. I knew I wasn't going to encounter any more tentacle horrors or dragons. The worst of my worries were centaurs and... Uh, Centaurs and centaurs and dar dar battle mages. Yes, that's what I was trying to remember. Interesting encounter here, even though it's kind of just fighting. Farming the door, waiting for centaurs, but they wasn't coming in. Phantoms and Yendar again. Actually, no, I haven't encountered any phantoms on this floor. All right, I was this point I was just running straight for the exit. Yeah, this, these floors are kind of straightforward. Nothing too, nothing too serious. I don't think anything has happened in interesting. It's just a lot of straightforward floors going up. I did some interesting things. Um, I did some interesting things before the recording gets corrupted. It's gonna happen shortly. Yeah, really straightforward stuff. The only thing I've been encountering so far is um, Will-O-Wisp, and maybe a, maybe a goblin, but there wasn't a huge, there wasn't a big deal or anything. Just a bunch of empty floors, more wisp, maybe the, the remnants and ghosts of falling enemies. And here is where the, here's where my replay gets corrupted. I encounter a spider somewhere over here, I think. I should have kept moving forward, but here I encounter a spider that webbed me right over here. And as soon as the spider grabbed me, the replay gets corrupted over here. Yep. Oh man, it would have been really good if I had a replay of the rest of this rest the rest of this run, but like I told you, this was a completely finished run. I have the screen caps and stuff to prove it. Maybe not in this video, but... Yeah. 
I made it to the end of this and I was so, so excited, so, so happy, so enthused. It, it was amazing. <sighs> anyway, this is where the run, this is where the run comes to the end. I used, uh, I used a couple of items on the way up. I think I used a couple of blinkings to get over some pits. Um, I didn't use any teleportation, I didn't use any descent, I didn't use any of this stuff. I just kept moving forward. And, uh, that's about it. That's about it, guys. That's all I could show. That's really disappointing. But... Yeah, I... Retrospective, I really enjoy this game. I love the whole... I love the whole dynamic that... It's all focused on enemies and dungeons and not just character stats, not leveling up and not, not any, not, it's basically breaking out of the whole formula of turn-based roguelikes and, and because of that it's a much, much stronger game and I, I love this game. <sighs> Alright, I think, I think I've about exhausted my commentary at this point. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you enjoyed my post-commentary of what I had for Brogue, and uh, maybe sometime I'll get into the whole Reddit challenges because they're still doing it. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm exhausting the commentary again, so thanks for watching guys. Until next time.